A recent study by the University of British Columbia shows that students who took music lessons in high school performed better in subjects like English, science, and math. That's not particularly surprising. Several studies link music practice to neurological changes that improve certain brain functions. Think memory or planning skills, for example. But does studying music or playing music create job skills? Is creativity linked to productivity? Composer and music professor Ethan Wickman joins me to add up all the notes on turning creative skills into practical tools. Welcome to BearCast. I'm Randy Lankford, and this is BearCast, a weekly interview with business, political, education, and nonprofit leaders. We're examining the relationships between all four and how each one benefits from the success of the other three. Ethan Wickman holds a Doctor of Musical Arts and Composition from the University of Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music, with additional degrees from Boston University and Brigham Young. Formerly on the faculties of Indiana University South Bend and the University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire, he's an associate professor of music at the University of Texas at San Antonio and the executive director of the Barlow Endowment for Music Composition at Brigham Young University. He's been described by the New York Times as a composer of facility and imagination. Among the numerous grants and commissions he's received are the Barlow Endowment, the American Composers Forum, the Utah Arts Festival, the San Antonio Opera Guild, and Chicago's Music in the Loft, where he was the 2014-2015 Composer in Residence. Ethan, welcome. Thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure to have you. Randy, it's great to be here. Great to see you again, and I've been looking forward to visiting for a few minutes. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, so, so I used maybe 10% of, of uh, your commissions and awards and reviews in making your introduction, and I just, it'd go on for a half hour. I can't go through it all. <laughs> Let me just sum it up to say that you're a highly, com- a highly uh, accomplished composer, performer, and teacher, and it, we'll call it that. Okay. Well, it's hard to say that about yourself because you always want to accomplish more and do more, but I, it's... I, I, it's a little bit like you know um, climbing a mountain. You know that the higher you go up, you know, you keep working, but the view gets a little bit better as you go. So um, I've been very fortunate to, to collaborate with some wonderful people over the course of my career, and uh, there are some some people that I still would love to work with, and some work I would love to still do. But I, it's been a very rewarding uh, profession for me. So far, it's going pretty okay. <laughs> it's going all right. Thank you. So obviously you're you're deeply uh, passionate about what you do. Where did that love of music come from? Was was anyone an influence on you at an early age? Did you have somebody that that you followed around saying, "I want to do that"? Sure. Well, you know, my both of my parents are musical. I mean, none of them, neither one of them are musicians by training. My mother uh, was is a very uh, gifted pianist and did a lot of accompanying growing up in our church and in the community. Um, my um, but music has been, I have professional musicians going back my mother's line. Um, my great, great grandfather was an uh, immigrant from England in the 19th century and settled in, um, in central Utah and brought his, uh, brought his piano with him <laughs> across the plains. He wow. was a composer and his, yeah, his son uh, also was a professional musician, studied at Juilliard with, with, uh, studied with Walter Damrosch in New York. Wow. Um, and, you know, became a, a music educator, taught high school. Um, and so there, so my mother insisted that we have music lessons from the time we were young, me and, and my brothers. And so I, I had piano lessons when I was little, you know, for, for a number of years. And then um, when I was about 15, my parents went to a, a, a show. I grew up in San Diego, and there was a great outdoor venue called the Starlight Bowl, where they would, they would show musicals. And my mom came back one night and said, I'm going to get you in voice lessons, and you're not going to say no. You know, just, she just had this mother's intuition about that. And that really started, I think, I, I, like singing and being able to work up to a certain level in singing, um, I think helped get me into music school and college. And of course, along the way, I was, I was playing guitar and singing in bands and writing songs. And I, it all sort of just came together for me there. But right. yeah, so, there's a, so music goes back to my infancy in that sense. Yeah, and it, it, you, you explained that uh, Brigham Young connection uh, pretty quickly, too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it, okay. So you're, there's the musical influence. What, what made you want to be a teacher? Where did that come from? 
Well, um, you know, teaching, it's really, really interesting. I remember a, a, um, a mentor that I had a number of years ago is a wonderful composer named Joan Tower. And she talked about uh, getting nourishment from teaching. And there's, a, you know, for a composer and an artist, there is a practical consideration to be made. I think a lot of composers and artists have, have, have contributed to their living over the years through teaching. But I find that the life that students bring in, the ideas that they bring, the way that they look at the world, I mean, um, it can be easy in our profession where there is, you know, there's a lot of rejection, sort of just, just by nature, by virtue of what we do, and you have to get used to that. And it's easy to get to a certain age and you can become cynical about the profession, about the world, about people that are working in it. What the kids bring is this constant, they bring hope, they bring excitement, um, they bring energy, and I, I would be lying if I said to you I, um, I've never found anything of inspiration in a student work that I've stolen for my own <laughs> right. for my own purposes. So I, I love working with the students. Um, and and so, that enthusiasm is contagious, absolutely, 100%. I agree. For sure. Yeah, it's been a long time since I was 18, so I, I feed off of that. I, I, I hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So... Given given that you have that background in music and that background in teaching, I'm going to take advantage of both of those uh, halves of your brain and 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 ask a couple of questions. Sure. You've had years of seeing how art relates to education. What have you observed? Does does involvement in the arts make someone a better student? Absolutely, um, and there are a lot of ways. Like, and there's been a lot. A lot of people have been writing about this in recent years because yeah. of obviously, you know. Um, School districts and states are, are strapped for cash, looking for ways to, to handle the, the, the situation. Uh, and sometimes the arts programs have suffered in some areas because of that uh, in order to deliver other kinds of curriculum. I, I have found that in my students, um, you know, a music student, an artist has to, first of all, you learn to take criticism early on. And so you learn to be teachable and that's important in whatever profession you're working in. Yeah. Um, you learn to sit in a room as a musician for hours on end and focus on one thing. And in a highly distractible world, you know, where we have stimuli coming at us from all directions, to be able to shut things out and focus in on a single problem and go deep with it is valuable. And I also think that I, the, the way of being able to sort of think outside of the box and to solve problems. And finally, I would say, I think, to be an artist, you have to be, in some measure, an observer of the world. And I think, ultimately, arts teaches you empathy. I think it teaches how to see the world through somebody else's eyes. And I think, what a way to heal the rifts in society, you know, is to be able to get in somebody else's shoes meaningfully and understand and try to see the world from their perspective. Yeah. So I, I think arts education does all these things and hopefully it creates great new professionals and you know audiences for generations to come you know and and again i'm 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 rolling right with you on that on on that boat that one of the reasons we created bear fest in the first place uh it would have been easy we could have just made the festival okay kids you're going to make a video about anything you want right just go out and make a music video go make a cartoon make whatever kind of video you want we deliberately made the, the arrangement that the high schools would pair with a nonprofit organization. You will tell a story of a nonprofit organization because that immerses the kids in a nonprofit organization way beyond what you get on when you take the tour. You take the tour of a nonprofit organization, they show you the, here's the, the, the five minutes of what we do. If you're engaged in telling that nonprofit story, you're going to learn a lot more of their story. You're going to have to get immersed in that. Part Absolutely. of that immersion is the, the, the culture. Yes, there are the mm -hmm. facts. You're telling the facts about this organization, but you're also observing the culture. These are yes. compassionate people that uh, wear their heart, often wear their hearts on their sleeves. They're not, they're not embarrassed to be passionate about animals or kids or veterans or whatever their particular issue is. And, and it gives young people the opportunity to see that it's okay. It's okay to, to, to get excited about, about something and really want to dedicate your, your, your time and your effort to it. So I'm, I'm right with you. I, I agree 100%. And, and I'm also a big believer that every adult is a role model. Whether you intend to be or not, whether you want to be or not, you, kids are watching. And they're going to 
they're going to pick up signals from from the adults around them. So I, I want to put them in the presence of responsible adults who are going to teach them re reasonable lessons, valuable lessons. For sure. So, so you've been a judge at Bear Fest. You, you got to see all the entries uh, last year. What do you think? Uh, what have you seen from these students? I think, I think, Randy, the creativity is astonishing. Um, I, I think back to, um, you know, when I was in high school and we get, you know, we have an English project and we, you know, make a movie. And I just feel like if, if you give these young adults, these kids, uh, um, if you give them a forum, if you give them a stage, um, they are, there, there's a kind of, uh, they're not inhibited so much by the way we can be as adults. And so some of the ideas they come up with are just, are just marvelous. They bring this wonderful energy to it. So there's creative vision. Um, there's also what's really impressive and I think this generation is the technical facility that they have. I mean, I mean what they're able to do um, in a digital realm is, is really, really impressive. So that's been great to see. And, and again, with so many places where the kids could be putting their time to, to create something that shines a new light on you know, a nonprofit, which is really like, you know, it's like an artwork. It's somebody's vision that they had, that they, that they made happen in the world. And so these two processes, building a nonprofit and building a work, building an artwork, um, really the, the process runs parallel. So, so yeah, I've been, I've been thoroughly uh, impressed with, with what I've seen. And, and these kids are, they're fearless. They'll, they'll jump off the cliff and build the airplane on the way down. <laughs> That's fly, right. Fly a drone over a lake? Sure. I have no problem with yeah. that. Just right. uh, put, put, my, put my work on uh, the internet and let the world tell me what they think about it? Sure. Why not? I'm not afraid. It's, I, I wish I had those kind of guts. Oh, same here. <laughs> At this point, yeah. I, I've heard some from some of the teachers who have brought kids to have brought teams to Bearfest that they have seen, and, and I'm not sure this is the right word, but they have seen some of the kids that aren't necessarily as fearless. That that you know, I'm fine with sitting behind a computer all day. I'll just sit here and do the editing, and mm -hmm. and I don't need to get out in front of people, and I don't need to talk to anybody, and I'm I'm fine working alone. The, the the faculty members tell me they have seen those kids just blossom right. that that over the course of, of creating a a creative product that they've they've come out of that shell and they've developed a new sense of of, of self-confidence and a new willingness to take feedback and a new willingness to reach out to people for their support and to 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 get their their insight is there any science behind that? Is, is that just the way it goes or, or is there, is there any study about it? I, well, I don't know that I could tell you about science, Randy, but I do know that, you know, of course, one of the great gifts of the time in which we live is that we, we are so digitally, um, we have so much available to us. There's a lot of, I, I, I mentioned it as, as stimuli before, but I mean, there's all kinds of information, we can, you know, here we are, you know, I'm in my room here across town from you and yours, and we're having this great conversation. But I could sit here by myself all day and kind of be an observer of the world. I think when you are, when you, when you engage in the creative process, I was talking to my composition students this week that, you know, creativity doesn't happen in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. You know, it happens, there are other works that influence us. You know, I think being around people and being immersed in the world is important. And so I think when we're able to, when we're given a task to get out and to meet somebody, I think it can be scary to talk to an adult that you don't know as a kid about their business. I remember, you know, being young and in, in Boy Scouts and being told, if you call this community leader to come in and speak to us, and it was just terrifying. Sure. But if I, have, if I have a mission, if I have a vision of like, I'm involved in a creative project, that I'm going to create something that they need, it gives me courage to talk to them. And when I get out there and I, and I can get experience getting out from behind the computer and talking to people and asking them about their lives and putting it together, it's going to make, it's going to make my creativity better. I'm going to become a more um, understanding, more empathetic person. Uh, and it's going to make the next time I need to connect easier. And I think that's one thing we need to be careful of in, in our current culture is it's so easy for kids to disconnect. And part of the divisive world in which we live, I think, is this kind of digital disconnection we have. From each other so I think that needs to be tempered with 
kind of getting in somebody else's life and sharing a vision with them. Sure. So sure. I don't know if that's a science, but you know, that's, that is, that's what I've observed and that's a, a, and how I've experienced it. I, I choose to believe that it is. Yeah. So, so science is subjective. I choose to believe that that is, that is science. Mm -hmm. um, the artistic component of Bear Fist is an obvious outcome of the festival. The, the nonprofits at the end of the festival walk away with all these assets, but I'm, the educational component is just as important to me anyway. The students in the festival become immersed, in it, like we were talking about in a couple of things. First, there's the media production element. They learn how to operate a camera, or they learn how to edit a, a, a photograph. But there's the soft skills too, uh, that, that you mentioned it yourself. I, th this is the first time a lot of these kids have interacted with adults as peers. Right. It's, it, it's not the teacher student anymore. It's the, not I'm the filmmaker. Right. You're the subject yeah. of my film. We, we will cooperate and, and create a, an end result. <clears throat> so the kids are learning communications. They're learning resource allocation, time management, all of that kind of stuff because they are immersed in it. They have to learn it. If they're going to complete this project, these are the skills you're going to need to develop. Mm -hmm. that, com that immersive component is, uh, is very interesting to me. Because creating music, the, the line of work that you're in is about as immersive as it gets. Uh, you're, 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 you, you live it. You live it and breathe it. Like you say, you sit in a room by yourself for hours at a time with yes. your thoughts. And, yeah. and they come pouring out the ends of your fingers. Does learning in that way, that experiential learning, is, is, is that different in any way than, than what you learn in the classroom? Oh my goodness. I, I think more and more I've found that when we try to um, bring experiential learning into the classroom, they learn so much better. You know, I have, the more that my students can gain, and of course, I mean, my composition students are getting some experiential learning because they're, they're learning to go through the process of creating a piece. But if I spend an hour just sort of talking to them about music, um, you know, that might be inspirational for a few minutes. Right. Um, but that that alone is is going to leave a student empty. They have to be able to go and and they have to be able to try it and practice it. You know, one of the things I love to do with my students is create professional opportunities. You know, to bring in a, a professional chamber ensemble and have them write pieces that will get read and critiqued, or provide you know just even modest commissioning opportunities where they collaborate with people out in the community. Uh, that is going to that, and that's important. And I think it's really important for our students to see their teachers also having a professional experience. Mm -hmm. um, I think in, in my position, I'm fortunate that I, um, I'm able to spend some of my time, still, I still compose, obviously. I mean, I, I'm, I'm busy, I, I'm excited about my own work. And I think if the students can see that, then I can model for them you know, a lifelong learner because every piece is new, every piece is a new mountain to climb, it's a new, it's a new set of problems, um, and, and I'm still wrestling with it like they are. And so the experiential learning, it teaches, but it also gives confidence that somebody in, the, in a real-life situation can overcome problems and succeed. That, and that real-life situation is, is very important. That, that's kind of what we're doing here, is, is putting these students in a real world situation with a real client with real expectations and real deadlines and a real story to tell. And what, what I've heard from some of the teachers that are involved in the festival is when their kids first sign up and, and realize we're going to get to make a video and it's going to be about a nonprofit, but the real point is we're getting to make a video and that's yes. exciting and it's going to be fun and it's, yeah. it's an experience and yay for us. <clears throat> and then they actually go to the nonprofit and meet the, the, the people that operate it and hear the story of who they're going to be talking about. And it suddenly becomes very real mm -hmm. that, uh, well, this was a lark a minute ago, but now it's serious that these people are counting on us and there's a real mission here. And, and we need to step up our game and help these people tell their story because their goal is to raise money or recruit volunteers or spread their, their, their mission. It's not, it, it is fun, enjoy it, be sure you enjoy it, but it's, it is business. And, yeah. and giving the kids that real world experience about this is a business with real consequences to what you're doing. 
and I understand that most of them are not going to go into the media. 99% of them are not going to become filmmakers or composers or, or designers. But I have to believe that this experience will benefit them no matter what field they go into. Is that, is that your thought? Oh, without question. I think um, it's, it's easy for us to get in a stream of mind where um, we, we think of education as, a, as um, it's just there to learn a specific trade that you can then do professionally. Right. And boy, there's a place that we all have to learn a skill of some kind to make our way in the world, whatever that is. But going through a process like this, I think, you know, I mean, if they're off to college or if they're off to, you know, some kind of professional training program, they're going to have a much stronger idea of what a deadline is, <laughs> what accountability is, how to talk to people, how to ask meaningful questions about somebody, how to connect. I mean, that, that's going to help you from, I mean, you can be, that'll make you a better electrician. It'll make you a better airline pilot. You know, it'll right. make you a, a better doctor, lawyer. I mean, all of those skills are, a, a, are the foundation for how we learn. Right. So. Well, Ethan, thank you so much for your time and your insights. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, and I'm uh, looking forward to getting you involved in this year's festival again. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait to see those. Uh, uh, I, I will be calling on you. <laughs>